You are Locked On Wolverines, your daily podcast on the Michigan Wolverines, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Happy Wednesday, back doing it. Third day in a row. Who th- would have thought? Locked On Wolverines podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Where is your team every day? At least it is again. Here. And Locked on, Wolver- Locked on Wolverines. I'm your man on the ground as a whole publisher of Wolverines Wire through USA Today Sports Media Group. And as promised, today we are going to continue our series, our summer series uh, on different position groups. I say summer, it's still not summer, but, you know, we got to do something. <laughs> so certainly doesn't feel like summer. And so I'm wearing a hoodie. If you're watching on YouTube, which is your prerogative, you can find this podcast wherever you want. Whether it's uh, any, anywhere you listen to or on YouTube. So I guess not wherever you want. You can't just turn on channel four and watch it. Anyway, it's not on MTV. Uh, so we're going to talk about the running backs. So this one is an obvious split, kind of like the quarterbacks. It'll get a little bit more convoluted, I think, once we start dealing with uh, different position groups like the uh, wide receivers, which we'll get to on Friday, and uh, where you start uh, getting multiple guys all in one place. Uh, But uh, so we're going to do it uh, kind of a similar split as what we did with the quarterbacks on Monday. And we'll uh, we'll spend the first uh, the first part talking about the starter and then we'll talk about uh, the the next guy and then we'll talk about the rest in segment three. And that's not necessarily going to take that long because who knows. But uh, so let's talk about the starter, the presumed starter. And the likely starter, and that's Blake Corum, obviously. And uh, it, I think it's it's interesting when you have a lot of talk, as there's been this offseason, about the idea that Michigan is going to have a giant drop-off because Hassan Haskins is no longer there. And I think what's interesting about it is Blake Corum was the guy, right? Like we went into 2021 thinking it was going to be Hassan Haskins, but Blake Corum was the one who really had that starring role. Now he started and Hassan finished that, that part is true because obviously Blake got injured in the Michigan state game. Uh, didn't play again until the Ohio state game. Uh, after actually, I, I think he played what one series, in the Indiana game. Maybe that's when he got injured. No, he got injured in in Michigan State. But um nonetheless, it it the the fact of the matter is is Blake was the one that was considered to be the dynamic one. He was the one that people were starting to talk about as being a Heisman type guy uh before his injury and then Hassan had to take on essentially dual role and be kind of that every down back, except for just every now and again when they would insert uh, Donovan Edwards. But I remember going into that Penn State game, for instance, and the thought was, yeah, Donovan's going to get pretty heavily utilized. He was healthy finally after he was banged up himself, and only for him to just kind of get barely utilized uh, until obviously the Maryland game, and then he was heavily utilized, and he wasn't really utilized that much in the Ohio state game because it was Hassan and Blake really. Um, but, uh, Blake Corum, I think is ready for that next step. And I think the re part of the reason why I think that is twofold. Number one, uh, going from 2020 to 2021, personally, I, you know, he was the one that we were talking about the least on this show, at least, and uh, I remember just constantly saying, I'm like, I know that this is probably wrong. He's going to end up being that guy. But they were talking about Hassan and everything he brought to the table and Donovan Edwards and everything he brought to the table. And I was like, oh, know that Blake Corum is going to be a lot better than what we're kind of giving him credit for right now. And he certainly proved that, right? He came out of the gates like a banshee. He was, and I sound a lot like, uh, what's it? He's a TikTok guy. I can't remember. A- Andrewski there um but uh he he came out of the gates like a banshee he was just absolutely insane to start the season 
And that pretty much continued for the, the bulk of the year. And I believe Pro Football Focus has him as their top Big Ten running back or somewhere up there. I, I'd have to look. I just know they put out a graphic. They had him at like a 91.9 uh, grade. And certainly, and I know that there's a lot of people that will say, no, 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 you know, and they're probably not Michigan fans, of course, but they'll be like, no, 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 it's Travion Henderson, it's Mo Ibrahim, it's, um, what's his name? It's escaping me, Braylon Allen. Listen, fine, okay, sure, why not? <laughs> you know, but uh, it, it could be any of the above, but to act like Blake Corum isn't in that conversation is ridiculous. He is absolutely in that conversation. He absolutely uh, has shown, and he would have been a thousand yard rusher had he not gotten hurt. Where did he finish? Because uh, he, he definitely was right there. And I, I have to know right now where, where he ended up finishing. He was awfully close. So he finished, he played 12 games, and he had 952. So if he stayed healthy, if he was able to have stayed healthy, he certainly would have gotten to that 1,000-yard mark. But he averaged 6.61 yards per carry last year. That's pretty impressive. If we want to look at those with the highest averages of those considered to be primary rushers. I mean, he's 23rd in the country with that 6.61. So I, I think you had to see if it says to qualify had to play 75% of the team's games have a minimum of four rushing attempts per game played. So he was 23rd in the country. Ahead of him in the Big Ten last year, he had Mayan Williams at 7.14. He had Braylon Allen and Travion Henderson tied for 6.82. So he's right there in that conversation. Seeing a name that I haven't seen in forever. I didn't know he's at Georgia State. Jameis Williams. I remember Michigan recruiting him uh, back in like 2015, no less. That's crazy. So he's right there. Those are, those are, that's, that's the list in the top 25 of Big Ten, uh, Big Ten rushers from last year. In, in terms of average yards per carry. Now, Mayan Williams moved on, so he's he's a top three guy. Certainly, there will be some others that will, that, you know, can and will be very good. But, uh, I mean, I think that's, that's really impressive what he was able to do in his second year. And he, you have to figure, now that he is going to be the guy, and here's the second part of the equation, seeing him, knowing that he's going to be the guy in the spring game and the few carries he got, it wasn't like, you know, oh, they're, you know, Blake's in, he's going to get the ball, so let's just bottle him up. Like, they, they did a good job of bottling up the run game when it wasn't Blake, for the most part, the defense, whoever was out there. And yet, Blake found a, found a hole, made a cut, and, got, you know, went. And I think that that's a really good indication for what uh, – Lightning is going to be able to do in 2022. So let's move on and let's talk about uh, the 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 second guy who's obviously Donovan Edwards, and uh, we'll we'll bring up some stuff from from let's go back to the recruiting a little bit because we've talked about it, but it's been a while. Might be you might be new to newer to this podcast. Might not have been you know listening. And obviously you weren't watching, otherwise I'd been creepy because <laughs> they didn't record it on camera. But back in 2020, uh, when I was uh, regularly visiting uh, West Bloomfield and, you know, watching him play in games and watching him in practice and talking to him and all of that stuff, the recruitment is interesting. And obviously we got a little bit of a taste of what he could bring to the table so let's get to that momentarily, but before we do, listen, I love brownies, but you know what I love more? Brownie batter. Sometimes I eat half the batter just while I'm making the brownies. Imagine if you could lick that brownie spatula clean and get some protein in. Well, you're in luck because Built has a new creation, and this one's better than ever, the brownie batter puff. You heard me right. This puff takes protein bars to a whole new level, and they're available right now on Built.com. Have you tried the Built Puffs yet? I'm not sure what you're waiting for because puffs are a chocolate-covered marshmallow protein bar. 
That's right, delicious flavored marshmallow covered in 100% real chocolate. 140 calories, 17 grams of protein, and only 7 grams sugar. Brownie batter puffs are the perfect pick-me-up for any day. So all Bill Puffs are covered in 100% real chocolate. That means that with Bill, you can eat healthy and actually enjoy doing it. And you know what? They're also made with collagen protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently and provides tons of health benefits. The Brownie Batter Puffs will have you completely forgetting they're eating a protein bar. No need to pinch yourself. This is real life. So go to Built.com to get the Brownie Batter Puffs now. Uh, you've used the promo code LOCKED15 at Built.com. You get 15% off your next order. That's promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off of your next order at Built.com. All right, so let's continue on. We've got uh, another really important guy to talk about. And uh, is, this is, you know what, the, it, going back to the axioms of what Jim Harbaugh always talks about, and I find this to be relatively accurate, uh, players tend to get better going from uh, game one to game two. They also get better, f- make that biggest jump from year one to year two. Uh, I also feel like, you, you, I mean, it continues. You know, it seems like whenever you see a guy as a sophomore and you're like, eh, he's okay. You know, by the, by the time his senior year comes around, you're usually like, oh, what it, what would we do without that guy? It, it kind of almost never fails. Or Usually from sophomore to junior year, I feel like is when that ascent happens. But we're talking about a excuse me, a freshman to sophomore here. And that's Donovan Edwards, the West Bloomfield product. Five-star according to the 24-7 sports proprietary rankings. Yes, I am I am noting that is the proprietary rankings for you rival fans out there for whatever reason like to watch this on YouTube. I don't get it. I don't know why. There's always like a bunch of idiotic rival fan comments. I don't care. <laughs> like, you act like I care that much. I don't. Um, when you, when you comment, but nonetheless, it's, um, yes, he was a four star in the composite and he was a five star according to, uh, the people inside 24, uh, four, seven sports. So Steve Wiltfong and, uh, and all of those guys, my ex colleagues over there, but, uh, he obviously didn't get quite as much play as you would have thought. Still played a lot. Got his first touchdowns pretty quickly. Week one, or no, week three. Week three is when he got it uh, against uh, NIU. He got two of them in that game. Let's uh, let's take a quick look at what he was able to accomplish in uh, in year one. So, thirty five attempts. It's a little, you know, in twelve games, a little more than one. You know, you think about the old school running backs that would get thirty carries in a game. A little more than one game. I mean, you look at thirty five. That could be one game. One hundred and seventy four yards. So. Pretty good if you're looking at that being one game. Uh, average of 4.97 uh, yards per carry, three touchdowns, but he only averaged about three carries a game. So, uh, but then on top of that, he had 20 receptions, keeping in mind that 10 of those came in the Maryland game for 265 yards, 13.25 uh, yard average, one touchdown uh, came in the Maryland game, averaging 1.7 receptions per game. Uh, and 22.1 yards per game. And then he obviously had a pass, which we, uh, which we saw in, uh, in the, uh, the Big Ten championship game. 100% passing uh, with a rating of 1060. 75-yard touchdown. That one was to uh, Roman Wilson, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and I might be. My memory's not good anymore. But uh, nonetheless, really solid start for Donovan Edwards. Didn't get nearly as much run as I expected him to get. Uh, played in 12 games out of the 14. Uh, but he is, uh, we, we obviously saw that he play, can play a big role catching the ball in the backfield. I think the fact that he was able to have that game against Maryland that he did is what set up, not think, actually, I know, that's what set up that, First touchdown against Ohio State because they had to respect him suddenly. And A.J. Henning was able to have that misdirect. So he's going to play a pivotal role. I I would imagine we're going to see both him and Blake Corum out on the field at the same time often because it creates problems. If Blake could get better at catching the ball, because right, like, because he he came in uh, against Michigan State 
And he had that uh, actually, I think he didn't, he play Michigan. He played against Michigan state the whole game and got injured and against Indiana the next week, if I'm not mistaken now, but uh, you know, he has those, uh, he had those moments where he would drop the ball. You know, he dropped the ball against Michigan state. It could have been a touchdown game would have been completely pretty much not put away. Cause that was like first quarter, but it would have felt like that. Um, so Donovan provides kind of more of sure hands. We saw that and we're going to have to see a little bit more from the running style. And now having, having seen him in person, uh, in the high school era when he was the guy, you know, we, we got to see him in person last year, but he wasn't the guy. Uh, let me tell you, he's the real deal. And going back to his recruitment, and this was the thing that I was kind of alluding to here. What a lot of people don't know is that he was from, and this was told by some a really good source. It, it, it's funny. He was the number one guy overall on Ohio State's board in 2021, right? Travion Henderson was number one on Michigan's board. And somehow they ended up at the opposite teams. Um, so it was in Michigan, certainly did not do a very good job for a very long time recruiting him. I know I created a lot of panic uh, on some message boards because there was, a, there was certainly a long period in which Donovan and Michigan, that was not going to happen. But as other teams fill out their boards, as you know, as Donovan, Donovan Edwards would have ended up at Ohio State if a couple things had happened differently. And if Ohio State hadn't overplayed its hand, the Ohio State very well could have ended up with Travion and Donovan Edwards, but it just didn't work out that way. Ohio State overplayed its hand. They, they tried to get too cute, too smart. Didn't work out. But uh, there was a period in which Michigan was as close to persona non grata as it could be. Maybe that's what's happening with Dante Moore. I don't know because I haven't talked to Dante in seven, eight months maybe a little bit longer, but, uh, it's, uh, I was pretty tied into Donovan's, uh, deal and Michigan was not doing a good job at all. And it took Michigan kind of a kick in the, you know, what, before they really started picking up on his recruitment. And then finally they did. And then they did a really good job and he ended up playing for the home home school. But, uh, he was, Michigan was being severely out recruited by Donovan Edwards, uh, or, not by Donovan Edwards, but uh, they were by other schools in pursuit of Donovan Edwards. And a uh, good thing for the Wolverines that they won that one because they are absolutely going to need him this year. And he he's a very dynamic runner as well as just, you know, he could be a wide receiver that we've seen that he has that capability. And, uh, but he's a running back for a reason. And will he have that Hassan Haskins type role where of, of being put inside and getting, uh, getting five yards when they need one? Probably not necessarily. He's not necessarily your third down back type. Uh, but, uh, I mean, that maybe that will end up being his role. We'll have to see how it, how it goes for him because that's the whole point with going from year one to year two and how much better a guy gets. I mean, think about Blake Corum. Blake Corum did not look like the Blake Corum we come, came to know last year in his first year. Certainly Michigan trotted him out right. He started right out of the gates. You know, he, he got the start over Haskins and Charbonnet against Minnesota. So it'll be interesting to see what, uh, how, what that kind of jump that Donovan Edwards makes. Uh, I, you can expect that he will get utilized heavily. And the fact that he can be on the field at the same time as Blake Corum also plays a pretty big role in the way that this offense can, can work. And that gives you another option having that outlet. Uh, when you, you know, you have all these other receivers, I mean, Michigan is building kind of a monster on offense and it's pretty great to see. All right, let's talk about the rest, uh, the rest of the field here momentarily. Really, it's just, uh, two to three guys, depending on how you want to look at it. This episode is being brought to you by rock auto. The ever increasing numbers of makes and models. It's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. Why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing only the brand their warehouse happens to carry? You have computers with access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. Save time and money when using Rock Auto. 
Rock Auto is a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. Rock Auto's prices are reliably low for every customer. Go explore their easy-to-use website today to find the solution to your auto parts needs. Go to rockauto.com right now, see all the parts available for your car or truck, and write Locked On in their How Did You Hear About Us box so they know that we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. rockauto.com All right, so we obviously still have some other guys to talk about. And I, get, I think the big question is, is who's going to be that bruising back? Because Donovan Edwards at six foot 200-something, um, I don't know what he's listed at now. He was listed at 202, I believe, last year. Uh, let, let's take a quick look just before we, uh, before we move on. See if I can find it quickly. Probably not. Football roster. See see what he's listed at coming into the off season, if uh, if it wants to work. So he's still listed at two hundred two six hundred two hundred two. So he's not necessarily going to be because I believe Hassan Haskins was what two twenty six zero two twenty five or six one two twenty five, I think. Um, we're gonna find that out too because. Six one two twenty, so pretty close. So Michigan's going to have to find another guy that can do that. Now they have a couple options, and uh, one of them is one that we didn't really see much of, except for again in that NIU game last year, and that's Tavier Dunlap. He's going into his second year. He's six zero two twenty two, so he's right there around that same size. Um, and he obviously he looked pretty good in the spring game. He got the most run of anyone uh, as far as running backs were concerned. Uh, which is good, obviously. Comes from DeVal, Texas, uh, which is, uh, granted, I don't he didn't have any overlap there, but that's uh, where Bobby Acosta is the head coach now. That name sounds familiar. He was the head coach at IMG Academy, I believe, for two seasons, including uh, the national championship season with J.J. McCarthy at the helm. But uh, so that should tell you it's a pretty good high school, right? That's the point of me saying that there. Uh, but other than Tavier Dunlap, you also have that opportunity to utilize Kalel Mullings, the linebacker who surprisingly came out and started uh, started playing some running back and is expected to be a two way guy. And uh, I, he clearly had some issues holding on to the football. Don't want that. We saw that with some other converted type guys, Ben Van Sumeren against Army. You know, everyone was excited about him. It's like, oh, having this big linebacker type. And then has a very costly turnover against Army in week two in 2019. So you can't have that. But 6'1", 236 pounds is what he's listed as. So that's uh, he's another guy that certainly could be that third down back type guy. I mean, he showed decent vision, went out there. But, I mean, he fumbled the football. Uh, granted, they called him down, but he fumbled the football basically at the goal line. And that's got to scare the living daylights out of the coaching staff. So you have those two guys as being your options. I don't really have a ton to say about them, to be honest. Uh, but then you, you, know, you don't want to forego talking about Leon Franklin because he's the, the walk-on out of Southfield. Who, uh, he's a senior this year, 5'8", 206. He was your garbage time guy a year ago. So he, he's someone that can certainly come in and do the job as well. I mean, he was ninth last year with uh, eight carries, 33 yards, uh, no touchdowns, but he uh, he appeared in nine games. Tavier Dunlap, however, had more rushing yards in the two games, uh, and he, cause he had two, ca- uh, two games, seven carries, 51 yards. So he's averaging a pretty high clip uh, there. So, And then, like, you know, we say this, but you, we – Totally aren't talking about A.J. Henning, who is going to have that Debo Samuel type role. We'll obviously talk a little bit more about A.J. Henning when we get to the wide receivers. But, I mean, he's he had nine carries for 162 yards. That's 18 yards per carry average. So, and then, you know, Roman Wilson got three carries for 59 yards. They're going to get guys running out of the backfield doing different things, right? Cornelius Johnson had three carries for 30 yards last year. So... Uh, and then let's, we're not even talking about, you know, J.J. McCarthy, 
in the positive for a running or not a running back, but for a uh, for a quarterback because Caden McNamara was underwater, thirty seven carries for uh, twenty six yards, but JJ McCarthy twenty seven carries one hundred twenty four yards. So if he's in a lot more than, I mean, you, all things are possible. Andrew Anthony had a carry for six yards. You still have Isaiah Gash, who was a walk on out of Green Bay, Wisconsin. For uh, six yards and uh, 17 carries last year, there, there's lots of options out there for you. So it'll be interesting to see how th- how that third position shapes up, or those corollary, uh, because we're going to see AJ Henning get carries. We're going to see some of those other guys. We're going to see Roman Wilson. Anyone, if you're a wide receiver and you've got speed, chances are you're going to get the football in your hands one way or the other. And then it's just a matter of finding that third back, and you've got a couple options. If I was to put money on it, I would say it's going to be Tavier Dunlap. Um, I know he wasn't going up against the greatest competition when he amassed his uh, the bulk of his, what he was able to, to get, but I think that he's, uh, you know, he, he's a bigger guy, he's big enough. I think that it's one of those things that it's it seems like it's kind of his turn now, and will he turn into that Hassan Haskins type? I mean, that's hard to predict. Uh, but I still think that that's it's a really good situation for them to be in. And listen, they still have Mike Hart as the as the coach. We saw this unit take a big step forward this last year. Only imagine with the offensive line being what it is, that there's a really good opportunity for that to continue. And it's one of those things I just don't think that people are talking about enough. And we'll obviously spend a whole episode on the offensive line, but uh, that's uh, really this run game should not be taking a step back. I don't know why anyone is kind of under the impression that it might just because Haskins is gone. Uh, yes, you lose 1,327 yards from last year, uh, but you're going to get a lot of yards from Donovan Edwards. I would bet that A.J. Henning is going to have more than 162 yards. I would bet that uh, even J.J. McCarthy will have more than uh, 124 yards, and Tavier Dunlap certainly is going to have more than 51 yards. So, there, you, you, there's a lot to like, and those running backs in particular are going to be able to split between uh, actually, you know, getting the handoff as well as, uh, you know, getting those screens or uh, out, you know, those dump passes, those outlets. Uh, there's a lot of options for them, or even just splitting out and running routes. So, all right, so. We are going to do the mailbag. It is back. It is going to be on Thursday for the first time in forever. Uh, tomorrow, uh, I've put out the question on Twitter, so get your questions in, um, and we will uh, we will actually do a mailbag again and hopefully start that up uh, for the foreseeable once again. And uh, Friday, we will resume with the wide receivers, and uh, we'll just continue doing this. It'll take us a couple weeks, I think, to get through it because we do have the mailbag. We'll occasionally have these guests and such uh, like we had uh, this week with Anthony Trish last week with Jake Butt. So uh, we will continue to uh, trudge through our positional breakdowns. So anyway, that'll do it for us today. Thank you for watching and or listening. We'll talk to you again soon. Peace. Peace.